It's uh, really kind of a special honor, again, to have David down twice uh, in one week to talk about something I personally have fallen in love with. And anyone that's uh, not seen this yet, I can tell you in a little bit of time after David's uh, done speaking, you'll fall in love with it too. David is a phenomenal individual first and foremost. He saw an issue and went to work to solve that issue and really, by doing so, created what I would say an entire industry and something that I believe each one of us need to be using on a daily basis. I Luckily, I've been able to use it here at the office because I don't know how many of you are like me, but you show up in the morning, you go home late at night, you try and sneak out to the gym during the day, and most days you have good intentions, but you never quite get there because a meeting comes up, and this has allowed me to move my body during the day. So I'm very grateful to David, and just really as he explains this whole, you know, just an incredible machine that I will call it that uh, allows you to do just some amazing things. So please join me in welcoming David Hall. And enjoy, that's all I'll say is enjoy. It's a lot of fun. How many are how many were here last or earlier this week? We have a few, right? Okay, how many have not heard me lately or so? Oh, good, good, okay. I want to ask you um, what it is that you want to accomplish in your own physical health. Um, well, my friend came to your thing and she said, You can do it in fifteen minutes a day and I said, Okay, fifteen minutes I can do that. So I already am really active but I don't do exercise but I'm active. Okay. And so I want to I actually what I really do want is to get strong but still have relaxed muscles that are strong. Uh, good. Because I get strong tight muscles. Oh, we're gonna talk about that. I'm glad you brought that up. We're gonna we're gonna go over something that's that actually is going to, it's a whole different methodology of exercise and it, it creates a whole different type of muscle, a healthy one. Okay, who else has something they want to accomplish? Well, I have about 40 pounds that I didn't invite them, uh, but they seem to find their way. You know, I have, I have a lady. That's good. Losing weight. Anybody want to lose weight? Um, yeah. Okay. You know, how, how do we lose weight? Besides we like to know that. Yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> That's why we're here. All right, we want to increase metabolism, and we want to use the biggest muscles of the body. They have the greatest demand. They give us the fastest results. So I'm going to show you something that we call the Jalma Run. You develop a love-hate relationship with it. You love it because it works. You hate it because it's tough, but it works. It's very fast. In fact, we have two women who have written me testimonials. They got rid of their cellulite in as low as two and three weeks. I had a doctor take one look at the Jalma Run. He said, David, that's so intense, it'll grow new capillaries which is what must have happened because you have to get access to that white animal. Yeah. It's very intense, wonderful. Men, same thing. You want to get rid of your stomach, don't do sit-ups. All you'll get are strong stomach muscles that nobody can see. You want to burn off the weight, and I'm going to show you a way that we can do that. Who else has something they want to accomplish? Yes? I feel better. Feel better. Mm -hmm. Don't we all want to feel better? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll, I'll show you the happiest exercise that you can do. In fact, children do it naturally, and they're very happy with it. Um, who else has something? They want to accomplish. Anybody? Okay, a little bit about me then. I was an insurance agent with Mass Mutual in Newport Beach, California. Um, average looking insurance agent. I had a little double chin at one point, a little stomach. I was about five, ten and a half, and I had I'd been poisoned with a. I'm not going to go into a lot of details, but I'd been poisoned with an asbestos poisoning that absorbed into my um, system very quickly because of some intense working out that I was doing, running downstairs while they were doing this dust removal, removal and I didn't know it. And so it collapsed the right side of my lymphatic system. all caved in on me. It was like a net. It just collapsed. And I woke up one morning, tried to lift my arm up, and I felt like I was tearing tissue inside my, my side. And so I took a hot shower. It didn't help. I didn't feel very good. My lymph nodes swelled up. Um, I had a uh, skin color changed. I felt very sick. I went to the doctors. They said they couldn't do anything for me. Over the course of about two years, I had large lesions that were coming out of my shoulders, my neck, my face, big lesions. The poison was trying to get out of my body. I did a lot of praying, a lot of soul searching, and trying to find something that I believe would help my body live long enough to be able to reverse the effects of what I've been through. And in the process, I discovered a program I'm going to share with you tonight. 
but it's a, it's a program that's been shared by people all over all over the country. We've got over 60,000 customers now. I've got a lady here. I just read you some of these testimonials of people who've been doing this program. She has chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia. She says, I've been quite sick for the past one to two years. I was in so much pain that I was taking morphine. My life was vanishing from my eyes on a daily basis. All I could do was go to work, come home, go to bed. I am single, so I have to work, although I've had to continually cut back my hours. With the assistance of my doctor, Christine Stiles, one of our customers, I decided to go off all medications, cold turkey, and start over. She suggested a cellar sizer and had one in her office. She had to help me get on and off it because I was so weak and unsteady. I could barely bounce on it, but started off with one minute three to five times per day. I did that for about two weeks before I was able to bounce a little harder. I'm still off all medications and am gradually increasing my time and effort on the cellar sizer. The level of pain I was experiencing on a scale of one to 10 was about 15. I was in agony. Now the pain level is between zero to three. There are some other major things I'm doing as well, but I believe the cellar size that is playing a major role in my recovery. I give the ultimate credit to, to God. Right. Gentlemen here, um, semi-professional athlete, he lists all of his different awards on the left side of the letterhead. <laughs> and yeah, he's, he's, he's proud. When I met him, his knees were torn up, his back, I talked about him Tuesday. His back was a mess, he couldn't uh, compete anymore. And I worked with him. He showed him what we can do to strengthen and, and restructure the supporting muscles and ligaments around the joints, which is something we also do before we're looking at knee surgery, hip surgery, back surgeries, or shoulder surgeries. The skeletal system can't support itself. It's dependent upon the supporting muscles and ligaments. And far too often, if they've been compromised through weaknesses or through injuries, then we need to strengthen those muscles and ligaments again. Well, that's what I teach or some movements that are designed to target those areas. I taught Robert Gent that program. He took it seriously to heart. Did it for about three and a half months. Goes out for the senior games pentathlon and wins first place in all of North America. Considered the best on the continent. In his 60s, he leg presses 885 pounds. And he sends me copies of these articles. But he writes, he says, it's been miraculous. The positive influence that your trampoline has had on my body. He says, I've spent thousands on supplements the past 15 years. I've tried every stretch, bloody stretching routine available. And nothing has worked like your tramp to help me get my joint and muscle health back. Other than his wife and I are totally great. Um, lady here, osteoporosis. Doctor said that what she accomplished was not possible. But she says, I had the test for osteoporosis done last July. My T-score was negative 3.1, which meant I had osteoporosis. I just had the test redone. In mid-April, my T-score improved to negative 1.7 into the range of osteopenia. The doctors say you can't improve your score, and even alternative medical professionals usually say the score can only be improved by 0.2 or 0.3 if you're lucky. I just improved mine 1.4 points in less than nine months, a 45% improvement. I've been tracking my T-scores since January of 2000. Um, lady here, you, you, you want to read these. I've had multiple sclerosis for 25 years and use a walker. But for the last eight months, I had to, I was in a wheelchair because of excruciating pain, knee pain. I was then introduced to the cellar sizer. I could not get on or off it without any help. Starting off with three to five minutes, two times, two, um, within two weeks, I was able to go for 10 minutes and get on by myself, but had help getting off. Now after three months, I can get on and off with no help. She says for the first time, I'm seeing the reversal of the effects of MS. Um, the list in these, People with migraine headaches. I had a lady with migraine headaches since 1958. And she was taking all kinds of pain medications. And none of it was helping. In fact, when she called me, she heard me on the radio. And she said, um, can this help me? I said, well, can you walk? She said, not really. I'm bedridden. I'm on IVs because of the pain medication right now. I can't even hold a glass of water steady. I have a tremor disease. I said, well, you may need to have somebody help you get on and off, but you're welcome to try it for 30 days. So she gets on it, she uses it for 30 days, I didn't hear from her. 60 days, I didn't hear from her. Three, three and a half months later, I get a two-page handwritten letter from her. Her handwriting is better than mine, and in that letter, she praises the Lord over and over. She says, for the first time since 1958, she is totally migraine free. She's off all pain medications. Her tremor disease is gone. 
And for the first time in four years, she's able to paint again. And she praises the Lord over and over in, in the last paragraph and thanks Him for me and, and the, the work that I've been able to do. So, what I'm going to do is teach you now a, a whole different methodology of exercise. I don't lift weights, I'm not a bodybuilder, so I don't have a lot of muscle mass. No, thank you. I lifted up. Okay, <laughs> I appreciate that. I don't lift weights, um, so I'm not. You know, I do a 10 minute in a day routine. Um, every area of the body. You know, I'm, I'm a 57 year old, so I'm not. A, I'm not a spring chicken anymore. But but every area of the body you see, it's still tight. It's still tone. I had a yoga instructor come up to me and say, David, I've grown more in strength and flexibility in 20 years, or in six months on your cellar sizer, than I had in 20 years as a yoga instructor. And I thought, well, that's rather interesting. I heard that before, but I remembered it. And I was in Austin, Texas one year, and another yoga instructor came up to me and said, um, well, I don't really think this works, and I, 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 I told her what the first yoga instructor told me, and she took offense to it and started to challenge me. And She said, well, can you uh, take your hand and grab it behind your foot and stand there like this? Said, like this? Yeah, yeah, I can do that. And she said, okay, well, can you take your hand, can you put it on the inside of your left foot, lift your, your right leg up like this? Is it like that? And she said, yeah, I can do, I can do that. And she said, well, okay, well, then can you take your knee, touch the ground, stand up again? I haven't done this in a while, but I said, I don't know. So, so I was standing on and then touching the ground. Oh, yeah, I said, I can, I can do that. Said, okay. <laughs> we were on a hard floor. She wouldn't do it. She had me do it. I said, okay, my turn. I say, can you take your leg? Can you stick it out in front of you? Can you sit down to the ground and then stand up again? She couldn't do it. She ended up getting a solar side. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Since we're all made up of cells, about 75 trillion of them, doesn't it stand to reason that if each one of your individual cells were stronger, healthier, and working more efficiently, that your body parts and functions would also be stronger, healthier, and working more efficiently? Does that make any sense? Okay, what I'm going to share with you right now, this is not science fiction. This is science fact. But it's not the exercise of the past. I call it the exercise of the future. We just make it available to you today. This is exercise at the cellular level. Now, we're all familiar with exercise at the muscular level, aren't we? Yeah. Okay, we've been taught for years to buy in. We're the only species in the world that does this. Right? So you're never going to see a cat or a dog going out there doing push-ups or bumping weights. But we've been taught for years that in order to become strong, we have to tear down the build-up. We have to sweat. We've got to do 20 minutes of aerobics. We've got done, there's no pain, no gain. We bought into this idea for, for many of us for many, many years. And the fitness industry has loved it because there are a lot of muscle groups and body parts to go around. So they can capitalize on that. Have you ever heard of any of these, the wedge, abdominal board, rower, ski, tone, core device, fitness climber, stairmaster, health rider, northern <laughs> traction, air dime, life cycle, life force, seven crunches, thigh, master, half glass, or solo flight, treadmill, cyclone, body gym, pose gym, torso track, ball, flex, the cell, and the list goes on and on. And let's, let's face it, as long as we buy in to that <laughs> methodology of exercise, we can rest assured every six months or so, the fitness industry will find another way of packaging, another piece of exercise that could just a little differently to motivate us to add to an ongoing collection because that's how they make their money. And yet the principle upon which every single piece of exercise equipment is based is exactly the same. They all work by applying weight or stress to a certain part, function, or muscle over and over until they adapt by becoming stronger. And what are those muscles made out of? Cells. Cells. So what if instead of lifting weight away from gravity, <clears throat> which limits the, the effect of the muscle doing the lifting. What if instead of lifting weight away from gravity, we could increase the weight of gravity on every single cell, muscle in your body and do it over 100 times a minute? Strengthening all of your muscles all at the same time, reducing body fat, firming your legs, thighs, hips, and buttocks, strengthening your arms, increasing agility, improving balance, rhythm, timing, dexterity, hand-eye coordination, Providing an aerobic activity for your cardiovascular system and rejuvenating your body when you retire. But this is a program that would go well beyond that. It's a program that's being featured more and more now in health magazines, books, and articles as being effective in helping to lower high blood pressure, 
helping the lower elevated cholesterol and triglyceride levels. That helps to detoxify the liver, improve kidney circulation, digest and elimination processes, stimulates the thyroid, the adrenals, the endocrine system. It's being used by a number of ophthalmologists today to help revitalize vision. But it goes beyond that. It's a program that, that only program that I can, that I feel can claim this. It's a program that includes an isometric for toning the body, an isotonic for building the body, that's weight bearing, a calisthenic for targeting the body, an aerobic for conditioning the body, and a flexibility program without ever stretching. It's a program that can be done in 10 minutes a day in the convenience of your own home, at the office, or while you travel, and you don't have to change your clothes, and you don't have to break out into a sweat in order to enjoy its benefits. Now, does all that sound too good to be true? Do you have to be genetically gifted? <laughs> no, I've got my before picture. I just want to back that up because as I mentioned earlier, this is what I've been doing in the office because I like to tell my wife I'll try to get out and I never do. But I sneak in at least 30 to 45 minutes extra exercise a day just as I'm listening on the phone. I can get up and do it in my office. And that's true. Thank you. Yeah, it would be too good to be true if we were talking about the current methodology of exercise, but we're not. We're going to talk about a whole different methodology of exercise. In fact, I'd like everybody to say exercise. Exercise. Now say cellar-size. Cellar-size. Okay, with cellar-size, you will never have to exercise the same way again if you choose not to. Now, a basic understanding of how all exercise affects the body will help us better understand cellar-size. I'd like to propose that the common denominator of all exercise is opposing the gravitational pull of the earth or creating some sort of a resistance. Let's examine this statement. If I were to lie down and do push-ups, what is the force that I have to push away from to lift my body up? Gravity. Okay, if I'm doing leg lifts, what force do I have to oppose to keep my leg? Gravity. Some of us have more gravity than others. <laughs> I, I, I guess <laughs> pull ups, leg lifts, sit ups, same, same difference. We can apply the concept to the accepted aerobic activities of walking, jogging, and running. If I take my center of balance, which is right about here, now for some of us, it's a little further forward, but as I, I, I was there, <laughs> okay. if I move my center of balance forward, I feel the force of gravity pulling down on me, causing me to take a step or I land on my nose. We can apply the concept to weightlifting. Weightlifting is simply taking a mass of something and moving it away from gravity. As far as the body is concerned, do you think it cares how sophisticated the equipment is? It doesn't matter whether it's connected with pulleys, pul fulcrums, wheels, cables, chains, or rubber bands. At the end of the cable, the chain, or the rubber band, you still have the weight or the resistance and it's simply the weight or resistance on the cells over and over that causes those cells to respond by fortifying their membrane with more protein. They don't care where the weight comes from. They don't care how sophisticated it is. <coughs> Swimming is a great exercise, except for the chlorine. <laughs> that kills you. It just does it a little bit at a time. But still, what is it that pulls down on the water molecules, creating the density necessary to allow us to move through the water. It's participatory meaning, so you can all say Gravity. Gravity, you bet, <laughs> gravity. So you see, the common denominator then of all exercise is opposing the gravitational pull of the Earth or creating some sort of a resistance. If that's the case, then all we really need to do to become stronger is to learn how to stand heavier. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> not, not exactly, but I am going to show you a way that you can stand heavier over 100 times a minute. The key to solar sizer, or solar sizing was given to us as early as 1911 by Albert Einstein. He observed that the human body cannot tell the difference between the forces of acceleration, deceleration, and gravity. To the body, it was simply weight. Anybody here have a sports car? Yeah, what do you have? Oh, have a sports car? Yeah, then no. one though, right? Yeah. Okay, you're in a sports car, you step on the accelerator of that sports car, you're going to feel the weight of accel acceleration pushing your body back into the seat. That's weight. Now, when you come around the corner, 
and you see the deer in front of you, um, and you hit the brake or the decelerator, you're going to feel the weight of deceleration pushing your body forward into the seat belt. Now, those forces are very obvious, but for whatever reason, and they have the same effect on virtually anybody, we're all made up of cells, and they pretty much adapt the same way when challenged. But for whatever reason, the fitness industry has never really harnessed those forces in an exercise program before. And it's generally because, I think, we experience the forces of acceleration and deceleration horizontally. And most of us are not going to be going around hitting the gas and the brake over and over <laughs> to create these G forces. We generally experience the force of gravity vertically. What if we could line the forces of acceleration and deceleration up with gravity and combine three forces on the body instead of just one? We'd have a whole different methodology of exercise. All we would need is a piece of equipment that would allow us to do it. Guess what? <laughs> oh, there you are. <laughs> this is this one's about eight years old. I travel with it, I demonstrate with it because I want to have people see how well it holds up. But this is our portable easy bounce solar sizer. Notice it is extremely portable. Somebody once asked me, what can I put in the glove compartment of my car? I said, I don't know how big your car. <laughs> I think he meant the trunk. But it can fit under a bed, in a closet, or in the overhead luggage van of most commercial airlines, which is how I travel around the country, different parts of the world with it. This unit has a unique history. And I'm not going to go into great detail other than to say that I first introduced in the early 90s what I called the soft bounce rebounder. Now, at that time, virtually every unit on the market were using little tube springs like this. I don't know if you've ever seen them, but there are little tube. Okay, these little, these cannot represent NASA's research. These low tube springs would stretch a little bit and then come to an abrupt stop or jar at the bottom of the stretch. The abrupt jar is very severe, can break the spring and damage the person using it. My dad was permanently disabled in 1995 attempting to do my exercises on a typical rebounder. So in the early 90s, I introduced a larger taper spring. It has a larger diameter in the middle of the spring and it gradually tapers, allowing the body to gently decelerate and accelerate but without coming to an abrupt stop or jar. So the rest of the mini trampoline industry started producing tapered spring designs. The problem was in the steel of the spring. If the steel of the spring is not resistant to the weight, then it looks the same until you stand on it, and it, you don't get the same benefit. So then I introduced what we call the triple tier tapered spring. It has a larger diameter in the middle. It has a ridge where it tapers, and then another ridge where it tapers before the last close. What it does is it helps focus the weight toward the center of the spring. And if you weigh 100 pounds or 300 pounds, you're going to utilize that portion of the spring you need based upon your activity, how high you're jumping, or how much you weigh. After the center portion stretches, then you graduate to the next ridge and so forth. So you do not come to an abrupt stop or jump. Now to open this, real simple. That's it. Don't confuse this with a toy. If not, I'll explain why. You can't buy into the CSK motor sporting goods store. So you lay the unit on the ground, open it up to what looks like a taco, <laughs> and then simply pop open the taco. Literally, in less time than it takes me to put on a pair of running shoes, I'm ready to begin solo size. Now, this mat material, I've got to tell you a little bit about it. This is made here in the United States. This is not a canvas, not on a plastic mat like you can find on typical rebounds. Canvas not on a plastic mats look the same until you step on it. When the mat material stretches with the spring, then your feet pronate every time you come down in the middle of the bounce. In addition to that, if the mat doesn't support your ankle or your foot properly and you come down, your foot or ankle can roll on you and that can cause some serious ankle problems, knee problems or back problems. This mat material here is a space age material it's a polypropylene where every fiber is put under nearly 200 tons of pressure. It's extremely dense. They make swimming pool covers out of this now because it's UV resistant. You can leave this out in the sun, the rain, the snow, it doesn't matter. I use it because you can't stretch that mat material out. You move up and down on it, it supports your foot. You move up and down on a mat that stretches, you will not feel supported. It'll have a tendency to throw you off. You can alter the angle of your body on this unit, it lifts you straight up. 
That's the difference in the support. The springs do not connect directly into the frame, so we never wear the frame out. I drilled 36 holes through the frame, but steel pins through each hole and connect the springs to the pins. The frame will last virtually forever. The legs don't screw on, because anything that screws on can get stripped, stuck, or lost. These fit over a steel post that are held into place by a heavy duty piano wire. That's an excellent wire. And even the rubber tips aren't rubber, they're polymer. We've never worn one of these out. I've had one out in the sun, the rain, the snow for 16 years. All it did was glue itself to the, to the uh, leg. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm ready to demonstrate cellar size. I just need to change into my cellar size outfit. So, pardon me, but just a minute. <laughs> you don't need anything fancy. <laughs> As I stand here, I weigh approximately 160 pounds. That's the weight of gravity. As I start to move just this high, a remarkable thing happens. I no longer weigh 160 pounds at the bottom of the bounce. I now weigh closer to 200 pounds, or 1.25 Gs. Now we can measure that with a G meter. Everybody here know what a G meter is? Many of you probably have one in your own home. You get up in the morning, walk in the bathroom, step on it, look down at the needle, and some of you may follow by name. Oh, gee. <laughs> <laughs> that is a G meter. <laughs> it measures the gravitational weight of gravity. Well, if I were to take that G meter or bathroom scale, put it on the solar sizer, and then jump up and down on it, what would happen to the needle on the scale? Yes, it would fluctuate, registering the greatest amount of weight at the bottom of the bounce. Well, we know that 160 pounds of weight comes from the force of gravity. So where does the other 25% of additional weight that I'm putting on my body, where is that coming from? Force going down. Yeah. What do we call those forces? G-forces. That's right. The forces of acceleration and deceleration. You see, as I jump up and I come down, I load the springs. That's known as the force of deceleration. The loaded springs then push me back up. That's known as the force of acceleration. Whenever you add the forces of acceleration and deceleration on the same vertical plane, you end up creating an entirely new G-force that all the cells are constantly being exposed to. So the question then becomes, what happens to the cells of your body when you alter or change the G-force? Part of that was illustrated very nicely by NASA who discovered that when the astronauts are in outer space for just two weeks, they can lose up to 15% of their bone and muscle mass simply because they do not have the weight of gravity to contend with. When they're up there for two to three months and they come down, they're not even allowed to stand up. They're helped out with the stretcher because the body in weightlessness becomes atrophy. The muscles lose their protein, the minerals and the bones go right out the bloodstream, right out the body the body is in a weakened condition. Well, NASA had to reverse that. How do you do that? How do you, how do you deal with that? They didn't have time to put weight on all these muscle groups or body parts. What if they missed one that was important, like the heart? <laughs> they had to put weight on the entire body. They did their research in the late 70s, published their findings in the Journal of Applied Physiology, showing what the benefits of trampolining did to create a weight-bearing exercise that was on the entire body. Well, doctors know bones and muscles heal faster and grow stronger when exposed to some stress. That's the idea behind the walking cast. Weight is virtually what our resistance is what virtually all exercises are trying to create. Well, by doing the trampoline, they were creating a weight-bearing exercise that wasn't limited to any one part of the body. It was on the entire body. But trampolines are not safe. They can be dangerous. If you land at the wrong angle, it can throw you right off. So now they use centrifuges, but we can't afford million dollar centrifuges, where they can create G-forces on the body to build up the body. So it was their research that led me to develop the solar sizer with a spring that would allow you to create the G-forces, but without jarring. Now, the physiological implications of the G-forces on the body as I move up and down, I want you to use your imagination because I don't have time to go through it all, but the movement up and down, how it stimulates the thyroid, the adrenals, the endocrine system, increases oxygen, blood flow to the brain, opens up lymphatic and circulatory channels, uh, what that's doing at a cellular level, as well as your internal organs and functions, um, 
I'll leave it to your imagination, but it's creating balance, strength, and circulation through the entire body. What I would like to do is share with you a few of the basic exercises that we can all benefit from right away. The first is what I call cell aerobics. Now there's nothing magic about the term aerobics. It simply means that all of your cells need oxygen to convert nutrients into energy and to burn calories. We receive the oxygen from the oxygen delivery system. We call it the cardiovascular pulmonary circulatory system. It's made up of your heart, lungs, arteries, capillaries, and veins. So an aerobic exercise is virtually any activity that stimulates the system to more efficient oxygen delivery. So most of us know that walking is a good aerobic exercise, right? So would this then qualify as, a, as an aerobic exercise right here? And notice your hips are allowed to drop down into the mat to loosen the lower lumbar instead of hitting against the hard surface because it can create stress or tension. So this helps to open that up. How about this? Does this qualify as an aerobic exercise? So even if I were blind, I could get all the exercise I needed without running into anything or anybody. <laughs> Stevie Wonder became one of my customers 14 years ago. I, I met him. He's a great guy. And if you want to train for a special athletic event, there's nothing to stop you from doing this. You do that for a few minutes, you'll have steam coming out of your eyeballs. But it's a, it's a vigorous aerobic activity but I left a few things out, such as barking, biting dogs, <laughs> rain puddles, potholes, carbon monoxide poisoning, curved mailboxes, and rollerbladers that jump out of nowhere. <laughs> a study conducted by University of Utah showed that trampolining helped to eliminate as much as seven-eighths of the ballistic impact to your skeletal system compared to running on a hard surface. So we've also helped to reduce or eliminate the concerns of ankle problems, knee problems, shin splints, and lower back problems. And we've replaced some of the negatives of aerobic activity with some of the more comfortable elements, such as being at home with the family, with the radio on, the television, air conditioning, heater, or simply a lock on the door for safety and privacy. And notice, I hope there's no holes in my side. <laughs> One size <laughs> fits all feet. <laughs> so if you're not using it, your spouse can. If they're not, your children can. And if they're not, grandma and grandma can. Let me ask you an important question. How many people need aerobic activity in their life? No. How many people need the jar of hitting the heart surface? No. It's, it's accumulative. And it can be very tough. Okay. The next exercise is what I call the mighty bounce for building up muscle mass and bone density. We generally think of a strength exercise as a muscular activity, don't we? For example, if I took and increased the weight of this muscle by doing curls by 20, 30, or 40 percent, I do a certain number of repetitions for a certain period of time, I get strong enough that I can increase the weight and maintain the repetition, and the muscle gets bigger and stronger, right? It works. Different kind of muscle. We've already determined that cellar size is a weight-bearing exercise. So if I were cellar sizing and I wanted to increase the weight to the muscle or to the cells so the muscle would get bigger and stronger, how would I increase weight on this body while cellar sizing? Anyway. Jump higher? Yeah, jump higher. You see, the higher you jump, the faster you come down, the faster you come down, the more you load the springs. The more you load the springs, the greater the force of deceleration, the greater the force of deceleration, the greater the force of acceleration. You add the increased deceleration with the increased acceleration all at the bottom down, you have a whole new G-force. At that height, <laughs> at that height, I bring nearly two Gs. That's twice the gravitational pull of the Earth. That means every cell is going to have to adapt by becoming that much stronger because if it didn't, I'd eventually get that much shorter. Well, not exactly. But you get the general idea. It's weight there, but it's not limited. See, most strength exercises just work the muscles. And generally, only one muscle group at a time. And while it is important to have strong and healthy muscles, isn't it also important to have strong and healthy connective tissues, ligaments, tendons, skin? How do you get a skin cell to do a push-up? Protein fibers, collagen, how do you do that? You put them underway, how do you do that? You sell 
it's all weight loss. It's all weight loss. That lady wrote me beautiful testimonial. She said, David, if I was hitting midlife, I felt like everything was headed south. She said, now that I've been solicizing, I feel like everything's headed north again. <laughs> it's all weight bearing resistant. Okay, I've been saving the best for last. And what I'm going to share with you right now, I don't think it's optional. I think it's critical. I really do. I believe everybody, everybody needs this. If you could look at your blood, the average person's blood when they wake up in the morning, blood cells have a tendency to be sticky. Yeah, sticky blood cells. And which means you wake up, you're not, you know, your, your, your body's not circulating as well. I'll notice when I wake up sometimes, especially if I've eaten too late at night, um, my eyes are puffy. You know, it, I, that's not a healthy state to be in. Isn't it interesting to know? And I learned this from my daughter. I was on a cell cycle one day. I was in Anaheim, California, and doing my exercise, and my daughter was in the crib, and she held on to the bar of the crib, and guess what she did? Oh, I was bouncing. <laughs> <laughs> I was bouncing. I thought, that's interesting. And then I thought about it. That's true with children anywhere in the world. It's natural. It's instinctive. Does it end in the crib? No. They get out of the crib, they graduate. Now what do they jump on? The couch. The couch or the bed. What do we do? Yeah. Turn it off. I tell people if we do better, not only would we encourage them to do it, we'd be able to do it with them. <laughs> Balance, rhythm, timing, dexterity, hand-eye coordination. We're not born with any of that. They're physiological functions, and they can be developed and improved at any age. Because they're not age related. Not really. Okay. So they start to bounce up and down. You notice how people dance, or young kids dance. Yeah, they <laughs> Bouncing off the walls, let go, you know, let alone the floor. <laughs> but we get to a certain age in our culture, and what happens? We stop bouncing up and down. We begin to live this horizontal existence. And we do, even our dance becomes horizontal. And we do it day after day, year after year, with gravity always flowing in what direction? Down. Is it any wonder by the time we're in our mid-30s, everything that used to sit up here is now sitting down here? We stop putting weight on the connective tissues. They get weak just like a muscle when we stop putting weight on those. One of the reasons boxers do a lot of jump roping is to strengthen the connective tissue that surrounds the internal organs, especially around the brain. Because when they get hit in the head, if that brain's loose up there, it'll crash against the skull, causing a knock. But if those connected tissues are firm enough, they can take a lot of punch. I'm not saying it's a good thing, but they can do it. <laughs> All right, there's another reason that's so important. Hardening of the arteries is the number one degenerative disease. It's the reason we begin to lose kind of our time. Memory, body functions, vision, it, it, it contributes to loss of body functions. And if that's true, wouldn't we want to know how to either reverse and or reduce or prohibit? Harding of the arteries. Is that important? Yeah, it's very important. How do you do that? All right, can everybody see that vein right here? When I flex the arm, it doesn't do anything. It just sits there. When I hit it, it just sits there. When I walk around, it just sits there. It doesn't do anything. But the moment I get on the solar sizer, this is important. The moment I get on the solar sizer and I start to move up and down, can you see it pumping? The movement up and down, helps you get rid of trapped blood proteins, opens up blood vessels, back flushes the blood vessels, which is very important to help clean them and keep them healthy. So those pressure changes help to maintain and keep the elasticity within the blood vessels themselves, which is very, very important. There's another reason that's so important, that movement. And see, I can't, I can't get it generally as effectively doing anything else than I can on this health system. The other thing that happens to do with the immune system, the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is also a circulatory system that works throughout your entire body, but it's not a closed circuit as much as a cardiopulmonary circulatory system. It's more of an open circuit, kind of like the branches of an oak tree working their way backwards. The lymphatic system begins in the lymphatic terminals. They're located in the toes, the fingertips, and the other extremities of the body, and they work their way up to other small lymph vessels for the lymph nodes. From there, the lymphatic fluid is cleaned, and then larger lymph vessels carry the lymphatic fluid up toward what's called the thoracic duct, the trunk, if you will, of the tree, the largest lymph vessel, and in through the venous cava area, venous cava area, where, where, um, it's called the subclavian lymph vein, or root, and then back into the bloodstream. Can I hold for a second? Okay. There's nearly three times as much lymphatic fluid in your body as there is blood. 
So virtually all these cells are surrounded by this fluid. When the lymphatic system is circulating properly, it has the ability to flush or suck out <coughs> the toxins, poisons, metabolic waste which accumulate within the body, which can lead to stress, distress, breakdown in communication, poor health, pre-aging, degenerative disease, even death. Everybody know who, what a lymphocyte is? You know what a lymphocyte is? Do you know who Captain America is? Good. Your lymphocytes are kind of like your Captain America. They're representative of the 1% of the cells of your body devoted to your civil defense. They're devoted to keeping you alive and healthy. The lymphocytes move throughout the body seeking out and destroying viruses, germs, fungus, dead cells, mutant cells, cancer cells, and other foreign invaders. Dr. Arthur C. Guyton, in his book Medical Physiology, points out that if the lymphatic system were to stop circulating for just 24 hours, we'd be dead anyway. And given our current environment and conditions we're being exposed to today, if the lymphatic system is not circulating as well as it needs to be, we're going to be more prone to what? Illness. Yeah, disease and illness. And according to a number of doctors and lymphologists, if the lymphatic system were circulating as well as it potentially can, it would be almost impossible to get sick. Well, irrespective, I think we can all agree it's important to have good lymphatic circulation. See, the lymphatic system holds a negative pressure. So movement causes suction. If the lymphatic system needs to be circulating well, where's the pump? Yeah, there is one. It's dependent upon pressure changes to cause millions of these one valves to start opening the chest, which is another reason why I believe this is so critically important, at least in my life, Every morning, I believe in everybody's life, every morning when you first wake up, I get on the solar sizer, I start to move up and down. If you could look at your blood cells underneath the microscope, just three to five minutes after you've been on the solar sizer, the blood cells, instead of being sticky, they become separated, oxygenated, and energized. They can circulate freely now through the body. Your body is literally in a different state. The moving up and down causes the pressure changes, the same pressure changes you see happening on the arm, it's also happening on millions of one way valves in the lymphatic system. It takes me about, yeah, three minutes, three to five minutes. You get on three to five minutes, you get this fluid circuit of movement moving through the body, through all these vacuum systems, through the one way valves, that start to pull that circulation between the bones, the joint, tissue spaces of the body, vacuuming out your internal environment, helping to keep you cleaner and healthier. If you get on the solar sizer, and you, this is another thing Dr. Arthur C. Guidance research showed, you run as fast as you can for one minute on a solar sizer, you can increase the number of active white blood cells in your body by 10 to 15 times, and they'll stay there for up to one hour. That's like giving yourself your own natural antibiotic. Natural. Okay, let me show you what I do. I start off every morning with two to three minutes of the baby bounce right here. This is the wake up call. Remember, everything is being stimulated. Thyroid, adrenal, endocrine system, liver, kidneys, spleen, gallbladder, pancreas, adrenal. They're all gently moving up and down. They're all being massaged. It's a wake-up call for them, too. It creates homeostasis or balance in the body. We'll talk about that in a moment, too. After I've done my gentle baby bounce, then I do my aerobic activity. You can start off just like this. This is a great aerobic activity. Just get those arms pumped with those legs. We have a balance where you can hold on to for balance. Um, I generally count to 100, and I go, you know, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then I go up to 100, and I'm done. Um, people say, well, don't you have to do 20 minutes? And I ask them, I don't know, do you yourselves have watches? <laughs> do you think 20 minutes means anything to a cell? It's not the amount of time that counts as much as it is how those cells are challenged within the amount of time. Solar size is more efficient. But yeah, you can go a longer sustained period of time. There's benefits to that. When I'm done with my aerobic, then I do my calisthenic. The whole thing's a little bit better. Um, when I began, I wanted to flatten my stomach. I wanted to tighten underneath the chin. <laughs> Vanity is true. <laughs> I held on to a door jam for life because I didn't have a balance bar. But uh, you can hold on to the balance bar now. Now with typical sit-ups, you're simply moving your body weight away from gravity. And it's limiting the effect only to a certain group of muscles right here. But when you cellar size, you tilt 
slightly. All these muscles tense up. They're tight. So they have to hold me up. <laughs> That's an isometric. I'm going to hold that for about a minute while I do an isotonic, which is more weight. I do that not just by lifting my weight away from gravity, but by increasing weight of gravity. So I, I count to 100. I go 1, 2, 3, 4. You can do it holding on to the bar. But every time I come down, I'm putting a lot of weight here versus this here. And how many other cells are participating? Oh. They all have weight on them. That's unique to solar size. Whereas typical exercise, you target only certain areas. Anybody have well handles? <laughs> Why do they call them that? Anybody love them? <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> this one here helps to tighten and tone the waist and the hips. You can, again, hold on to that balance bar. And what I do is I kitch out side to side, just like this. Every time I come down, I'm putting a lot of weight right here. And that's much more intense than simply doing this. You're coming down with the weight of the entire body. To strengthen the lower back and the buttocks, this helps to lift, tighten, and tone the whole backside. You can lean forward on the balance bar. And when you have a balance bar, you can put more effort into your routine so you get better results. But for demonstration purposes, I don't generally travel with it. But you hold on to the balance bar and kick your legs out behind you. That simple. Every time I come down, I'm putting the weight right here. Okay. Everybody eat today? You know, most of us eat every day, right? Okay. I think this is the second most important physical activity we can do on a day to day basis. The smooth muscles don't get nearly enough attention, especially in the fitness industry or health industry. And the smooth muscles are where we absorb our nutrients, the colon, the intestines, the intestines especially. We eat every day. Every day, I get on the solar sizer, I bend the knee a little bit, I lift my heels up and down, and I put my intestines through a little washing machine. This gentle movement, side to side, helps to loosen the lower back. You're not just working the upper back like the, you see a lot of people do. You're working the lower and upper back. But you're also, through the movement up and down, side to side, it's totally changed my digestive elimination processes. It also massages every day the liver, kidney, spleen, gallbladder, pancreas, the adrenals. What are they doing? They're all moving up and down side to side. They're all being massaged. Most people don't get that in a static existence. Okay, thighs and knees. Real important to strengthen the supporting muscles and ligaments around the knees. Um, I stand on one side of the mat, I step across to the other side, and I just have a gentle hop, just like this. Look familiar? A lot of skiers do this. <laughs> okay, same bird feeding you would have if you were on the slopes, but it helps really strengthen the thighs and knees, and very few exercises are doing that. If you want to go skiing, go ahead. I'm on the slopes, <laughs> and you just visualize going down those It's literally, it's the same muscles that you would feel if you were skiing. Okay. Want to lose weight? All right. So let's talk about the Jamba Run. I designed this. Um, I was in New York one year, and I've been teaching this for several years. And I had a lady come up to me and she says, I lost my cellulite. I got rid of my cellulite. She wrote me. I said, I one. I got rid of my cellulite. In two to three weeks doing that. I said, Oh, really? Well, get up there and show us. And she gets up there. Now, I had been teaching it is the Jamba Walk, which was, I didn't call it that at the time, but I've been teaching it at a walk. And this is excellent, where you spread the feet apart, you bend at the knee, keep your back straight, your feet flat, you push down into the mat. You're using the big muscles. You'll feel that very quickly. So I'm getting, I have her get up there expecting her to do this. She gets up there, and instead of doing this, she does this. And I thought, that's it! That's the jamba run. <laughs> and I've been teaching that, and that's how the women and the men, you lose weight. It's extremely intense. Those are big muscles. They eat up the glucose and sugars in the bloodstream very quickly. And, and then, when you're done with the first step, you stand there, breathe in and out, and then you can do another step. And the, the women who got rid of the two in two to three weeks were doing repetitions of that for almost 20 minutes a night. Very intense. I'm going to show you one more, and then we're going to do a demonstration with some of you. 
This one here, if you listen to my voice, my, the, way, the way it is right now, this one here I designed to help open up the bronchial tubes in the lungs. In the process, to, open, to make them feel better because I, I, so sorry, I, I they, got, they were painting my car and I walked in while they were standing. And I got all this pain in my lungs and it felt terrible and I wanted to get it out. So I was so excited one night and I started to do this to help get rid of the stuff in my lungs. And it's very effective in doing that. Um, but I started this movement and I had no idea at the time how incredible this really was. But it goes like this. It goes. <laughs> and when I was done doing it, can you hear the difference in the voice? It's a big difference. It opens up the bronchial tubes, it opens up the lungs. I teach radio announcers, I teach people that sing the same thing. I had no idea it was going to do that, but it opens up the diaphragmatic breathing throughout the whole area. So you don't need a mic. <laughs> it, it, makes it, it makes it a lot easier. Now when you first start to do that, you'll find that the bronchial tubes and lungs are a little wheezy. Because most people aren't really exercising the lungs very efficiently by doing a lot of swimming or long distance running. So this is specific to those lungs. They can be a little weak, a little sensitive. I suggest people don't do more than eight to 10 times when they first start. You're pumping with the lymphatic system throughout the entire chest cavity as well. <laughs> when I first started to do with that, it was very wheezy. But um, after about two to three weeks, they open up, they sound different, and they're stronger. I always have to say, in any time you do an exercise program, I'm obligated to consult with your doctor or health practitioner, especially if you have a health condition, or have them call me. I've been teaching doctors and health practitioners for over almost 25 years in my programs. I've learned a lot from them, and I can share it with your doctor, and they can help determine what would be best for you. One more, and then we'll do the demonstration. Okay, this is one Darren likes. Man, he's a glutton for punishment on this one, Lisa, huh? <laughs> This is a, this will blow any ab machine out of the water. I had an uh, infomercial opportunity with this one. Um, turned down the infomercials because they wanted to compromise the integrity of the product. I wouldn't do that. But this is, <laughs> this will put most of those machines to shame. I don't do this to build up the stomach muscles. I like the one where I stand up and kick my legs out because it makes a flatter muscle. This will make more rounded muscles, but it works. You start off, you can put your feet on the floor support your back while your back is getting stronger. You can take away your hands. And why am I still moving up and down? It's all because of these stomach muscles right here. As you get stronger, you can lean back for the lift one leg up and you leverage even more weight in that area. Now you're working the lower abdomen where everybody wants to work. When your leg is tired, lift up the other one. Eventually, you can lift up both legs and bounce a little higher and it's all being done right here with the stomach muscles. As you continue to get stronger, then you can go cheek to cheek. And now you're working the obliques. Both sides of the stomach wall or in and out or up and down. I don't know if any sit up that would come close. That's it. Do I have to do those? Oh, you start off easy. You wouldn't believe in a month. Start with a book. In fact, yes. You can hold on to the balance bar when you're jogging. Just simply tilt slightly. Okay. All these muscles are tight the whole time you're doing it. Yeah. If you want to work on that chin, take that 15 or 20 pound head and tilt, tilt it backwards. So that every time I come down, the muscles are flexing around the neck. And that I have a question on the abs. What's yes. Out in general, for women and men, is it better for the women to do the standing up one versus the sitting down just because we're Different. Yeah, women often will like the sitting down one better because when you sit down and <laughs> tilt backwards, all those internal organs also sit back. And after you've had children, the, the connective tissues in there often get stretched and they're, they're weaker. But when you sit down and tilt backwards, you don't have just the movement straight up and down while those connective tissues can firm up. So you're, you're leaning backwards a little bit and you can bounce like this and take your hands away just right here. If you lift a leg up, now you're working the lower abdomen, but the internal organs are sitting back 
is going to just straight up and down. So you can do it either way. But women, especially after they've had a child, to promote contractions, they'll get on the subtle side and will promote contractions. But it helps to tighten and tone. The One of the yes. too, um, I'm sure you've had this asked before, but what about bladder control mm -hmm. problems? Because <laughs> I've had five kids, and you know I work out all the time. Mm -hmm. But the, like when I would go jump on our big trampoline with our kids, yes. I couldn't do it without having to go to the bathroom. And when I would do really intense workouts at the gym, and they would bring the jump rope, in, which I love the jump rope, but I would have to usually go to the bathroom. But I couldn't do it for very long. I've been on it a little bit. I have messed with it. I've been okay, but I'm just. I've had a lot of people ask me that, and I have that problem. I've had it for a long time. So, but I tend to be able to run okay. I don't know, but the jumping, um, you know, the jumping on the tr big trampoline definitely. I can't do it very long, or else I have to run in the house and go to that. So. Let me read this uh, letter from Gloria. I don't think she'd mind my telling reading this. David, after a little over one week on the cellulitizer, I have a lot of good things to say about it. First, I started off slowly because I felt like I was using a lot of different muscles that I don't get in my regular exercise program, and I was experiencing loss of urinary control. After only three days, I was able to cellulitize for 10 minutes with urinary control at short jumping, no high jumping. After one week, I was able to cellulitize fast, hard, and high with full urinary control. I can no longer, I can go for longer periods of time without having to go find a bathroom and I no longer lose urinary control when I sneeze. It is totally amazing to me that something like this can work so quickly. She also talked about her digestion, how it improved that, and then she talked about her husband and his improvements. But one thing that we can do while we're standing on the solar side is the old Kegel method where you tighten, that's an isometric. But we want an isotonic. We want a bigger muscle. We want to build that muscle. So as we stand here and we tighten and then jump while you're tightening, you're going to be putting a lot more weight, but you're also going to be working that muscle more. And that's think the muscle helps control that. And so as we get stronger, it, it gets better. And you don't have to start off doing a lot of high jumping. Start off gently and allow those muscles to, to tighten down. It's a great question. What about arms? Arms, okay. There's on the, the DVD that we have available through Q Sciences, we have, a, we have two DVDs, the one that comes with it, good 30 minute DVD. And the, the more advanced DVD, which is two hours worth of information, and it represents about 20 plus years of my work in the industry. It has a drop down personalized menu where if you have shoulder problems, we're gonna talk about that, knee problems, hip problems, back problems, digestion, elimination, um, tightening and toning, the natural facelift, I haven't shown you that. Um, it has over 20 different techniques that are that are in there that you can take a look at and included in that are isometric and weight bearing exercises for the arms for example the arms get bigger anyway but if you want to do a resistance movement you push down with this arm it works the back of the arm while you're pulling up with this arm and then bounce and you get an isometric with an isotonic which is more weight than you would normally have to help build tighten and tone that area you can take the hand and stick it behind you this is shown on the dvd as well where you have resistance and then bounce and as you're bouncing, again, it's more weight. You can't last, I mean, in, in a minute, if they're going to be shaky. They're going to be very, they're very, it, it's very intense. So you don't have to do 30 seconds. You do 30 seconds. If you want to work the upper chest area, you push in and just gently bounce. If you want to work the shoulders and back, pull apart. Arch your back a little bit and pull apart. I do that a lot with chiropractors. When a chiropractor makes an adjustment, the muscles are not used to the new alignment. They have a tendency through habits and and muscle memory, they have a tendency to pull the bones back out of line. So the chiropractors that I work with will do an adjustment, then they'll have their patient get on the solar sizer, gently bounce up and down, so it's not pulling the, the bones out of alignment, but the muscles are flexing around in the new alignment. And it expedites the, the healing pro process. And I often get chiropractors whose patient, or who call me up, or their patients have called me up, both of them, saying that their, their patients have um, held their um, they were holding. They would, yeah, they say they were holding. Yes. Okay, now let's do some. Uh, let's do some. I need a couple people, a couple volunteers. Lynn. Okay, come on. All right, cool. Yeah. What's your name? Lynn. David. David. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. 
Okay. Now, then what I want you to do before you get on this is we're going to do a strength and balance test. Now, I've taught this with SWAT teams, who are now customers of mine, military, uh, athletes. This, this, isn't, this is real. What you're going to see is very real. Um, in fact, in the DVD that I was talking about, it's, a, it's, a, it's an upgrade to the DVD that comes with it. I actually called from the audience a bodybuilder, martial artist, and yoga instructor. And did the same test on them, blew them the audience away. So what I want you to do is take a horse stance, spread the feet apart a little bit, bend the knee, keep your back straight, your feet flat. It's just a horse stance. Good. Okay. Take your hands, put them in front of you, elbows into your side, just like that, arms out, like that. There you go. Perfect. Remember that position. I'm going to push down on your hands. I want you to attempt to resist me as hard as you can, and we're going to see how well you can utilize your strength right now and how balanced you are right now. Okay? So watch. I'm going to push down and you resist. Ready? Okay. <laughs> resist. That's pretty good. Okay. <laughs> try, try not to give up. Um, he, he was, and, and you notice how you think you immediately want to come up a little bit? You can come up and then, okay, now watch. Because I'm going to push hard. Be strong. But let's see how well, how well you can do this. Okay, ready? Okay. Resist. I'm going to push down, 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 and eventually he's coming over. Okay, now come on up here on the solo side. Come up. Uh, let me put that rubber foot back on this one. And come on up on the solo sizer. And the first thing I want you to do is take your hands, put them up on these trapezius muscles. Hold on to these muscles with your fingers. These are the muscles that help hold up our posture. When those muscles get weak, the shoulders droop, and the back can't support itself. We also can get a lot of stress and tension in this area. So this is a massage as well as weight bearing. So watch this. I want you to grab them with your fingertips. Now bounce up and down. Good. Keep going. Good. Now, just like that, can you feel the weight on those muscles every time you come down? It's all weight bearing. At that height, he's taking 10, 15% of his body weight, putting it on top of him. He's doing over 100 of these a minute. But instead of pushing the weight away from gravity, he's increasing the weight of gravity. And it's not just on these muscles. It's on every single cell membrane in his entire body. So let's see what's going on. Can you grab the deltoids right here, the shoulder muscles? Okay, kind of squeeze those muscles with your fingertips and bounce them down. Can you feel them flexing? It's quite a bit, isn't it? You don't get that in your normal day-to-day -day activity. That's the precursor to the shoulder exercise we're going to demonstrate in a minute. But that's a lot of weight, huh? Yeah, it's too easy. Okay, now people say, how do you build up a bicep? Jumping them down on the shoulder side. Just put more weight on the muscle. Well, how do you do that? Yeah. Watch. Grab the biceps with your fingertips. Squeeze the muscle. Bounce up and down. Can you feel weight on the muscle over and over as you move on down? Yeah, yeah it's all weight bearing. It's either going to eventually flop the bottom of the mat. It won't. Or it's going to tighten the tone to compensate the weight that's on it. Now take your hands, dig them around your waist, dig into the stomach muscles with your fingertips. When you have the muscles, now bounce up and down. <laughs> Can you feel the muscles in there? Something's going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Dig into those muscles. I want you to put the muscles in there. I, I've been there. Yeah. They're flexing. He's doing over 100 sit ups a minute. At the same time, he's doing over 100 of these a minute. He's doing over 100 of these a minute. He's giving himself a facial. All the facial muscles have weight on them, so they have to become more resistant. And his internal organs are moving up and down, too. And the connective tissue surrounding him starts to firm up. And it, it's intense, isn't it? Yeah, I know. And people don't realize. 10 minutes a day. Um, when you first get on it, 10 minutes is a lot, um, but you build up there. Now let's step back down and take the same position. See, he wasn't favoring one side of the body over the other, like with typical exercise modalities. It's just different. You want to have a great yoga experience? Really, a really good yoga experience? Get on the solar sizer for the first five minutes first, and then do your yoga. You're going to be totally balanced. Watch. Take the same position. Yes. Mm -hmm. Bend in the knee a little bit. And that, okay, I'm going to push down just like I did before. You can resist and tell me if you notice any difference in your strength and balance now. Okay, ready? Okay. Resist. No. <laughs> He's totally balanced. I can't, I can't, I can't, you know, he... Thank you. Is that great? And, and what will happen, this is what happens, is... An aerobic impact sport, if you were to do one right after this, 
You hit a hard surface, it shatters the nervous system. The body tenses up, it exposes all your imbalances. If I had him up here for 20 seconds, jumping him down on the ground, he'd be very weak. After about three months of psilocybin in a balanced state, you become much stronger in a balanced state. Then you hit a hard surface, it doesn't matter. So, um, have you seen this before? Me? Yeah. I don't know, it's my first time. Come on up here. I'm going to show you something. We're going to do one more time with him, and I'm going to demonstrate what happens with typical aerobic exercise. Just kidding. Did you? All right. <laughs> well, thanks for coming. And I, I don't know, I hope you've been able to see enough of this. If you have questions, though, go ahead and ask me. Yeah, have some questions. Good. Now, now, he looks like, do you do some weight lifting at all? I deliver a dry loss in a lot of ways. Strong. <laughs> okay, well, that's different, though. That's a different kind. It's not tearing down, that's building up. There's a difference in that. Um, if you tear down to build it back, let me show you something. Um, this is kind of weird, but I want, you, I want you to come over here, and I want you to feel my, squeeze my muscle. Right, so is that weird? It's like soft. It's extremely soft. This is like a cat or a dog. A cat or a dog, when they're relaxing, their muscles are just like that. It's not that soft. <laughs> well, <laughs> you could probably have torn, torn down a little bit. But, but when I affect it, though, it's really hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really strong. I had a doctor come up and tell me, he said, David, I've read about muscles like yours, I've never seen one. He had me come in front of a group of people when he was doing that, and when I was done, and he had me flex, he said, that's the healthiest muscle I've ever seen. And cat, that's the kind of muscle that is flexible, it's, it's fast, it's, um, it's healthy. It's a healthy muscle. So come on up here. The, oh, wait, no, no. Just stand here, and we're going to do the strength and balance test here first. Like this? Mm -hmm. That was right. Perfect. Okay, now I'm going to push down. I want you to resist. And you just try as hard as you can. You ready? Okay. Resist. As I push down, see how you come forward? Okay, try it again. You know what I'm going to be doing, so you do the best you can. Ready? He's leaning back. He's confident. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, strong. <laughs> watch, watch. Just like I'm going to do it again. As I push down. Yeah. <laughs> Goes right forward. That's okay. You give it a good effort. Come on up on the solid side. Okay, I want you to take your hands now. Put them both on the trapezius muscles. Grab these muscles. Now bounce up and down. And feel those muscles flexing. Yeah. Yeah. They're flexing all halfway down. Now grab the deltoids. Grab the solar muscles. Can you feel the question? Yeah. Quite a bit, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, now take your hands. I want you to pull onto your biceps. Squeeze those muscles and bounce up and down. This gets rid of the acids, too, um, which accumulate when you tear down the build up. It helps flesh them out and you're creating healthier muscles. But you don't lose your strength. Keep your strength, you just have a healthier muscle. Okay, now take your hands. They go around your waist, dig into those stomach muscles with their whole arms and the fingertips, and bounce them down. Still in flexion? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want 100 minutes a minute? 100 minutes a minute? Why would anybody want to spend time lifting weight away from gravity when we increase the weight under gravity? I mean, as an exercise or for health. As a sport, it's okay. I'm not against it, it's a sport. But it's different from what the average person needs to be strong and healthy. Okay. Now let's step back down, take the same position. What's your name? Jordan. Jordan, that's right. Thank you, Jordan. Both have a little minute. All right, Jordan. <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing, and <laughs> I want you to resist, okay? All right. And, and now you're tired, right? So you should be weaker. Okay, ready? Resist. Feel the difference? Yeah, yeah do it again. <laughs> okay. I can't pull my hand You've got lighter all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> ready? I'm pushing harder the second time, believe me. <laughs> Ready to resist. See, I have to put my weight on them because I hurt my shoulders when I try to do them the second time. Now, I'm going to do something with you. We're going to jump up and down on the ground for 20 seconds. Can somebody measure the time for us? Okay, ready? Oh, okay, nice one. And we'll do this for 20 seconds. Now, what this illustrates is an aerobic impact sport. When you get a hard surface, the muscles tense up. If the muscles are not strong in a balanced state, you're going to notice it because they're going to pull the body right back out of line, back out of balance. Okay. Okay. All right. Now take the same position. I'm going to try again. Tell me if you can notice any difference. Ready? Resist. <laughs> <laughs> try again. Ready? This is real, guys. Okay. Resist. Put you down. Feel the difference? Yeah. Now I did it right alongside of you, right? 
Okay. Those will probably be weak too, right? Yeah. Push down my hands. Totally down. Come on, I'm so much better. I don't want to leave you in that state. <laughs> 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 gently move up there, and you'll get it back, and we'll do it at that moment. Are there any questions that I can answer? Yes. Thank you. Thanks for your patience. Uh-huh. I have a question about your question. One is, I've got those with feet problems, but can we stand on them for more than two hours at a time? Yeah. We want to build up circulation in the lower extremities and strengthen the feet tone. What? When you're on a cellar side, the weakest area of circulation in our body is in the lower extremities. We get varicose veins, edema, swelling, because it's harder for the heart to get that circulation back up to the heart. The calf muscle has often been called the second heart, because every time it flexes, it creates pressure that helps speed that circulation back up to the heart. Standing on the cellar sizer and lifting the heels up and down gently, most people will feel it. In fact, that's the weakest area. Most people feel it first when they're on a cellar sizer. And within two to three weeks, they don't feel that anymore because it's gotten that much better. But as I lift the heels up, I work the arches, and I work the calf muscle. And I'm also helping to pump circulation anyway. So it helps to reduce swelling in the lower extremities while helping to increase circulation to the heart while strengthening the calf muscle and helping to build up and strengthen the arches. Kind of cool, huh? <laughs> I had some great testimonies. Oh, yeah, come on back down. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot about that. Take the same position. Did you feel that dome? Did you start getting tired? Oh, yeah. I was waiting for him to see. Don't fall over. You you try just as hard as you can. Ready? Resist. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that cool? That's right. Yeah. (laughs) Think of the implication for somebody who likes to play golf and they're that balanced, or somebody who's a baseball player, or somebody who's involved virtually in any kind of sport, when you have that kind of balance. I took a, a, uh, a wrestler in high school by helping the train on the solo side, not on the one stage. Was it because of the solo side? I don't know. It could be. It's kind of hard to throw somebody off balance when they've been training in a balanced state. I took a basketball team, and I worked with them on the solo side. They went on the one state, Manta. One, they went on the state here in, in Utah. The this, this same time that I worked with them on the solar car. Is it a secret weapon? I don't know. <laughs> well, you do. You do know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't fib to it. <laughs> I do, and I'd love to work with a professional team. I really would. Because, because it takes, oh, and after a few months of solar cycling, you're going to be strong, even when you hit our service. Okay? You'll be strong when you hit our service. Because you're exercising in a balanced state. So you become strong in a balance. It just takes a little bit of time. You'll keep that during for several hours, by the way. David? Yes. We have to sneak for Wendy. No, I'm, we're okay. You guys can stay. But okay. Anybody want to get us cellar size tonight? Yeah. Okay. Um, we're just answering questions, so we can. Which, which ones did you want, the try or the buy? Yeah, okay, we, we've, got, we've got two models. The trifold is the one I travel with. It's great for demonstrating. It's Yeah, it's a good unit. And it's less money here through Q-Sciences than it is. I have never sold it for this. In fact, our prices are going up to $570. I believe what, what are the prices for Q-Sciences? Well, David, thanks to Four? David, 450 for the try, and he sells them for well, four ninety nine for years, but he's just raising his price to five five seventy nine, five eighty. Okay. Which is what I originally sold for. Four fifty and the the bifold is three three fifty. The the yeah, it is. For here for Q Sciences it's three fifty, that's right. So three ninety nine on our website right now. But should be this is the this is for both trifold. The half fold the half fold looks the same. It it's simply the legs fold down. And the same way, and the unit folds in half, just like that. It fits into a carrying case that you can hold over your shoulder, and you can travel with it still. Does it come with the bar also? Yes. It comes with the balance bar. It comes with a book, a DVD, a booklet, an exercise chart, and a 3 day You can try it does too, the bar? Yes. And the bar fits into the carrying case. I just don't travel with it because it's 10 pounds heavier. But, um, yeah, it's. It's up, guys. It is. It is literally a one-time investment for a lifetime of benefit. You will not want to not do it once you start. So this one here, this is the trifold. 
this is an old trifold. The new trifolds are actually a little better than the, the older trifold. Um, and so is the character. But it, um, but it holds up. This is a, this lady here heard about me on the radio, started to sell her size. A few months later, she called up the Seattle Times newspaper and said, you got to get this information out to the public. The Seattle Times had no idea what she was talking about, or what, they, yeah, what she was talking about. But they asked her, how old, how old are you? Who's married to I'm 94. <laughs> they said, where do you live? They put her on the front cover of section E of the Seattle Times newspaper. She sent me her letter, and in her letter she says, David, I really think this saved my life. She explains why. And then she goes on to say that since the printing of this article, the Seattle Times has had more requests for copies and duplications of this article than of any other article they'd ever printed. The lady here began in her 80s by the time she was in her 90s when the scheme began. At 101, she celebrated her birthday to Bogney. Her daughter started with me. So what? Oh, have you ever mental status? Balance. Have you ever noticed children bouncing them down? You're happy. It opens up circulation, communication, and endorphins. Um, Oxygen to the brain. You feel better. You feel better when you're when you're when you're bouncing. Yes. Yeah. I have a friend that just has been to the doctor. No more running at all. Good. Really bad back. So yeah. What would you suggest, like for her? Well, this is easier than walking. This has less jar on the body than walking. But if, you're back, if your back really hurts. Yeah. There's body. techniques that I teach. I got to show some shoulder movement and then back movement. If you for the shoulder, if you take and you can support your arm. And as you gently move up and down, you'll get a lot of weight right here to the movement up and down. As you become stronger and more flexible, you slowly start to move your arm up as you're bouncing to where you feel it's comfortable. And then you bounce there for a few moments. And if you take your arm like this, pull it out to the side or support it either way. And then you do all the way around. So you can do both arms the same way. It opens up the shoulders. And then um, for the back, the newer DVD has specific exercise for the back. I wish you was here. I could have showed her a phenomenal technique that I teach doctors and chiropractors where we take all the vertical pressure off of the disc and off of the back so the nerves don't feel threatened. It's a phenomenal technique. That. Anybody here have a back problem? Come on up. <clears throat> I can answer questions while I do this. And a quick question to Darren just wants to know if there's anyone else that wants them because he's loading. Well, then you're going to like tomorrow, we can come into the I'm sure you can. Yeah, yeah. 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 What I've just done is I've taken the vertical pressure off of her disc and off of her nerves. The nerves don't feel threatened, so the muscles can now start to release. They can start to relax. The movement up and down is not a surface massage, it's a deep massage. You cannot do this through hand massages or through vibrating machines. It's working through the entire body. How does it feel? That's good. Doesn't it feel good? Yeah. I've got some great stories on this one. But as I'm moving up and down, we're also massaging all of her internal organs. Extremely relaxing. I've had people, I had a lady, I'll tell you this story. You'll see her on the newer DVD. She'd been in a car accident five years before, been to seven specialists in five years, and none of them could help her other than give her more and more pain medication. She wasn't expected to live, but she did. And she was under excruciating pain all the time. She came up to me after I'd lecture. She said, David, can you help me? And I said, tell me your story, what's your situation? And she came back in at lunchtime, and I did the same movement with her, and she was extremely tentative. I laid her down, and said, how's it feel? And she's like, it's okay. I said, relax. Just relax and feel what's going on inside the body. We're taking the pressure off of the nerves, not putting it on the nerves. So then I started rock side to side. After a few minutes, I said, how did that feel? And she said, it's okay. Okay, so relax. Okay. Well, about 180 people came in from lunch, gathered around while I was working with them. I was explaining to them what I was doing. I did this for several minutes and then had her stand up and I said, Jean, or, um, <coughs> I, I, I asked her, I said, what, uh, I'm <laughs> um, 
But I asked her, what has she felt like? To be honest with me, to be honest with everybody here, and be honest with yourself. You may or may not feel anything. Um, but tell me what you feel. And so she stands there, and um, she moves her hand and her neck, and she stops, and she gets this blank look on her face, and she does it again. She moves her hand and her neck, and, and again, she does it a third time. And in desperation, you see all this desperation still up inside her, and she says, why? And tears just start rolling down her face. And I, um, I asked her, what's wrong? And she said, the pain is gone. The pain is gone. So she, we helped her off stage, and she sat in a chair. And it was a very touching moment. And then she went to sleep that night, came back the next day. She said, I was able to sleep for five hours straight without having to get up, or without waking up. First time I've been able to do that in years. And so she got the seller's side. I told her, I said, okay, you get the seller's side, but I want you to call me up and let me know how it's working for you. I called her twice, and she um, never returned my calls. I didn't know what was going on. So I went back to the same program a year later in Costa Mesa, California. And this lady in a red dress, red high heels, spiked shoes, red hat, red hair, she parts away, comes right up to me, and she says, Hi, David. Remember me? And I, I couldn't, I could take it. I said, I couldn't, I couldn't take it. So where, where are you dead? What happened? And she said, I've got a life again. The pain never came back. I still have other issues I'm working on now, but the pain didn't come back. I'm remarried. I'm married. I said, would you be willing to share your story on stage when I talk in front of 3,000 people? And she said, yes. So she's on. She's on the edge of the crazy All right, now we're going to have you pull your knees towards you, roll to the side, just like that, on the field. And then just stand and just kind of feel how it feels. Kind of move around a little bit. And that's a, that's a deep massage. We're also massaging all over internal organs. That's a great one for massage therapists, too, because it gets to those areas that they weren't able to get to when they were doing the massage therapy. David, thank you. Garen, thank Will you. Will you give me a round of applause? Oh. Thank you. Thank you. We all probably know people that have knee problems, hip problems, back problems, digestion, elimination issues, weight loss issues, balance, headaches, shoulder problems, whatever the case may be. Will this help with a gut replaced knees and replaced yeah. hips? We've had, we, I have a gentleman who's had two hip replacements, still ski trains on the solar side. See, what it does is it strengthens the collateral muscles around that joint so it doesn't continue to deteriorate. That's very important because the body becomes dependent upon those implants and the area around the implant has a tendency to continue to deteriorate. Right. They don't know exactly how to take care of that, so they give you medications right. and things like that. Well, the solar size is weight there. So it helps promote osteoblastic activity, which helps to strengthen those bones and supporting muscles and weakness out there. So my point is, is that you all know somebody, this is an easy, an easy way. And I'll tell you what you can do in your business to have it grow very quickly if you're interested in the business part of it. And this is, this is fine. This is fine. You have a home party. You have them come over, have some refreshments, have them watch the, the newer DVD. You know, this is normally $40, it's $20 here. It's half price. I've never sold it for that either. So, but your family. So she signs it literally, you are family. We're gonna make a difference in this in this Handle that wedding reception or go for it. neighbors are in trouble. I'll be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see later. If you, you, you have them come over, you have them watch the program, the demonstration part of the program where I'm talking to people. It'll explain what it is, why it works, shows you how to use it, shows you the demonstration when I bring people from the audience. So they, they're educated in it. That's all you have to do is educate them. Then, when they're done watching the demonstration part of that, then you take them all through the strength and balance test. You will have seen me do it on stage. You can do the same thing. You have them do the strength and balance test. Now I'll tell you, they'll do one of two things. They'll either fall right over, up and over, which is common. Or that if they're real competitive, like you will see the yoga instructor on stage is. She was the yoga instructor for the 3,000 people who wanted to prove me wrong so bad. She was so cute. But she, she stood up there, and, and, and you could see, you, they'll change the center of balance. 
because they, they, they want to adapt, so they don't come forward, but she's still helpful. <laughs> and and uh, got her on the solarizer, did it again. It blew them and the audience away, and you can see it. So now you do it with them. You do the, don't let them on the solarizer, don't even take it out yet. Um, but have them go through the strength and balance test, all of them. Then have them get up on the solarizer for just a few minutes. Have them, have them feel what's going on in the muscles. And, and as, they're, as they're doing this and explaining it, have everybody, have them sit back down, have everybody go through it. When they're all done, have them stand up and do the strength and balance test again. You're done. It's over. They're going to know. They will have been educated. They will have seen it work. They will personally experience it. They're going to ask you how to do it. And it just grows from there. Because every one of those people are going to know somebody who's dealing with back problem, knee problem, weight loss, circulation. You know, sleep disorders. One of the great routines on this, and we learn about it, is when you see parents do it when a baby's fussy. They take a baby, yeah, and they gently make that, and the baby relaxes. Well, we're too big to be part of the fussy <laughs> but, but we get on a cellar sizer for two to three minutes. The way you do it is you just stand there, relax. I do it until I feel the pressure of the tip of the finger. I know I'm getting the circulation everywhere. And then just relax. Relax the shoulders back and back. Just do this for about, I don't know, i got to drive. But do that for about two to three minutes. And then just go back to bed. You don't have to toss and turn to get rid of the stress or tension. It's gone. And I had a lady in Pasadena was at the Natural Health Federation doing a demonstration. And I'd been there six months before, and I was there again. And this lady, part of the group, I had no idea who she was. Who she was. And my wife was there. <laughs> she comes running up, and she throws her arms around me and gives me a great big hug. And while I'm talking to these people, I'm whoa, who is this? And she just, really sweet. She said, um, I don't have to take any sweet medications anymore. This thing, you show And I didn't know at the time that so many people had problems sleeping. I didn't know that. I just knew it worked for me. Um, she said, thank you. Now I can sleep enough. And I had another lady who was uh, um, Joyce. Um, she was a president of the Chamber of Commerce for a minute. And it's incredible, incredible testimony. I'm confused I was out. Yeah. But I always thought when you exercise at night, it makes you yeah. be more up. So yeah. when you don't sleep, then I miss that. Mm-hmm. No, I'd be happy to. And yes, you can. You can rejuvenate and exercise the body and oxygenate the body and stay awake when you need to. But when you want to go to sleep, it's like when a baby is fussy and they're having a hard time relaxing, you gently bounce the baby up there. And the baby relaxes. It's the same principle. The moment I get on the solar side and I just gently relax the shoulders and hack and buddy, it really feels good. You just gently relax and gently move up and down and let it all go. And do that for a few minutes and then go back to sleep. You don't have to toss and turn. I do the same thing with women who have babies. It's usually, not always. I mean, I remember six kids. I <laughs> would get up at night too. But um, if a mother gets up and if they pick the baby up and they want to help the baby go back to sleep and they can't be doing this and then they put the baby to sleep and then they go back to bed and they're just laying there. <sighs> I can't sleep. I can't get to sleep. And one of the things that I teach them is that you get get the baby and both of you get on the solar sizer and gently bounce the baby. And that's what I do. You gently, it's very good for a kid, um, <laughs> what they call it. But, but you just gently move up and down. And when, when the baby's relaxed, they love it. When they're relaxed, put the baby back to sleep and then you can go back to sleep. Because you've also helped to open up circulation relax. But just don't fall asleep while you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, any other questions that I can answer? Thank you. You're welcome. Very, very Thank nice. you very much. Thank you. Okay. How does that come back? I've never seen that. Thank you.